Thank you very much indeed, Gilles. Uh, so we are starting off with the presentation from Syria. Um, it's Peter Lydiard who's going to give this presentation. We just heard that there's a GNA exercise underway in Syria. The cluster was activated in 2013 in Syria. So it really is a very, very long term exercise there. Um, so it'd be very interesting to hear some more details from Peter. Hello, my name is Peter. I am officer for the whole of Syria Logistics Cluster. Today, I'll just be talking a little bit about what the cluster does to support partners operating within the um, whole of Syria humanitarian response. Giving you first a quick introduction, then an overview of our activities before closing on some challenges and opportunities, as well as other considerations for us moving forward. The logistics cluster in Syria was activated in January 2013 to enhance coordination and the operational capacity of organizations operating inside the country. Uh, then in July 2014, the UN Security Council adopted Resolution 2165, and later that same year in September, the whole of Syria approach was adopted. This brought together separate regional operations into a single framework to align and further strengthen the overall effectiveness of the response. So what do we do? In terms of services, for the cross-border operation from Turkey to the northwest, we have the UN transshipment operation running at the dedicated transshipment hub near Babelhauer border crossing point. The hub consolidates all trucks transporting UN assistance, both Syrian and Turkish, into one place, making it an absolutely critical asset in enabling the effective and efficient cross-border movement of um, UN assistance into the Northwest. And the protracted nature of the crisis in Syria does not by any means affect that criticality, and cross-border access is as essential today as it has ever been. Inside Syria, we facilitate access to common storage facilities in uh, rural Damascus, Aleppo, Homs, and Hasake governorates, as well as uh, availing some limited transport options, both uh, landside and air. There is also a contingency stock of diesel available in case of emergencies with depots in Homs and rural Damascus. Inside Syria, there is no major logistics gap apart from a small amount of storage. In 2020 and this far in 2021, uh, there have been uh, a very low volume of storage and transport requests that have come through the cluster. This is partly to do with the fact that the overarching logistics capacity in the country does meet humanitarian demand. Um, but it is also partly in line with a shift in the dynamics of the humanitarian access landscape. We'll touch on this again a bit after in the next slide as well. But just for some context, until 2018, more convoys were taking place. Convoys led to surges in demand for storage and transport uh, services, as well as fuel which was covered to a large extent by free to use a cluster facilitated services and donations of asset. However, since then, uh, access improved drastically, reducing the need for convoys and by extension, the factors that drove that demand up in the first place. So this is all held together by a coordination and information management framework and uh, with the whole of Syria Logistics Cluster Coordinator and I'm Officer based in Damascus and the Deputy Cluster Coordinator based in Gaziantep. So moving on to the last slide. Um, as I already mentioned, there is no major and clearly identified logistics service gap inside Syria. But the situation is changeable. While logistics provider capacity generally meets the demand, exchange rate volatility, fuel availability, sanctions, all these factors uh, mean that the situation is fragile and prone to change. 
So with this in mind, strong and robust coordination and IAM framework are the key uh, in a volatile logistics environment. For example, fuel has been a major factor recently. Lack of availability led to price hikes and was compounded by the currency depreciation. I am and coordination and the already existing community of and network of logistics partners was crucial to um, rapidly gauge and understand the scale of the impact uh, on their operations, on organizations' operations and the response as a whole. All the steps being taken now to respond to recurring shortages uh, and plans being put in place have largely been fed by the information that was provided by the cluster partners um, through engagement and collaboration. Uh, along the same vein, and as mentioned earlier with regards to the shift in access, uh, humanitarian access in 2018, convoys are still being organised uh, and do still take place. There is one being organised currently. For this one and potential future convoys uh, rely upon um, the same coordination I am structure we just talked about, as well as, of course, maintaining continued access to uh, free to user logistics services um, to respond to any surge demand for those convoys. As a final example, in the cross border, Operation IM, GIS and coordination uh, and engagement with various stakeholders led to the development of, of uh, maps and new IM products. So that work proved and actually continues to prove to be vital to the intersector discussions around access inside the Northwest, especially during the winter months. Um, or for example, regarding uh, the closure of Baba Salam last year uh, and the subsequent rerouting of all aid through Babel Hawa, access and information on access, physical access, was in, in very important. So moving forward then, there is a lot of space in that uh, sphere. Um, for the cluster to continue to expand its engagement with international and local actors operating inside Syria and cross-border. Inside Syria, we are in the middle of a gaps and needs uh, exercise. Um, we are interviewing organizations individually, separately from each other, uh, in-depth one-hour conversations that uh, will lead to a lessons learned document, a, a sort of a report of findings. Uh, that will then feed the cluster strategy for the rest of 2021 and, and beyond. Uh, the gaps and needs exercise will inform capacity building requirements um, with clear indicators uh, on future benefits for the organization, so not being just a reward system, um, but uh, you know being able to, to really impact their organizations, operations, and effectiveness. Uh, for the cross-border operation, uh, a strategic advisory group has been established, and um, uh, a co-facilitator position has been made available, and an NGO uh, will to take that space will be elected in May. Um, this will be followed shortly by a strategic advisory group inside Syria as well. All of this should strength, will strengthen partner buy-in and ensure the strategy of the response takes into consideration uh, varying and many voices. Um, and then, as a final point, noting the sort of low level of logistics service requests, a potential phase-out of clusters, uh, fl cluster logistics services could take place. But... This would depend upon final results of the gaps and needs exercise. And as mentioned previously, the volatility of the context makes it difficult to fully commit to a full phase out. Um, I think that's all. And I guess I will leave the floor for questions now. Thank you very much indeed to, to Peter.